Okay. Well, tonight we are going to uh, go forward. We have dealt with uh, the after the rapture, and now today we are going to begin with the beginning of the tribulation period and the temple that is going to be rebuilt and the signs and wonders, of course, that are going to be shown and signs that will reveal to us the end time. Uh, there is a always uh, a foreshadowing, sh the shadow of things that are to come always fall upon years and times before the actual event happens. So there is a foreshadowing of these things. So a lot of the things that are happening, and as I've talked to you before, they overlap, in other words, if you could call it that. They overlap. They, uh, they don't just happen overnight. Boom, a major thing event happens by and large. Now, the rapture will. It will happen, boom, like that. It'll be over. Uh, in, the, in the moment it takes you to blink your eye, the rapture will be over completely. There's no second chances. There's no, oh, wait a minute, you know, uh, let me do this or that or the other, because the rapture is going to happen um, in, in, a, in just a, a, a moment of time. And the church will be gone, completely gone. People in relationship with Jesus Christ, this is what I want you to always understand. There are, not all the church is going, because there are people that go to church that are part of the church who have no relationship with Jesus Christ. And it is necessary, if you're going to go in the rapture, to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So just because people call themselves a Christian or a believer does not necessarily mean they're going in the rapture. So I want to tell you, you've got to have that. And, you know, the way you have a relationship with Jesus is the same way you have a relationship with anybody, which is to do what? Talk to them and listen to what they say. There's got to be that communication. You know, uh, if, you, if you're here tonight and we never talk to each other, we don't really know each other, right? We don't. The only way you know anybody is by listening to them and talking to them. So if you're in a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is required that you be talking to him and listening to him. So people that claim to be a Christian and never communicate, never read their Bible, never pray, I don't know. I, I, would, be, I would not want to be in that position if the rapture takes place. Uh, so the first thing, you know, after, after this great war that I've been talking about for a period of time, y'all got that war down, Pat? About all the death and all the destruction that's going to happen during that time of that war, that is previously to the actual tribulation starting. When the tribulation starts, the, the reason we know it starts is when there comes a covenant between the Antichrist and Israel. That is the beginning of the tribulation period. So Israel, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I, I could speculate, which is okay to do to some degree as long as I call it speculation, uh, because the Mosque of Omar has to be gone. That's the, the Mosque of Omar is where the temple place is. That's where the temple is supposed to sit. It's called the Temple Mount. It's the place where Jesus was crucified. It's the place where Abraham offered his son Isaac. Uh, all of this happened in this place. It is the place for the building of the temple. And there will have to be a cleaning, cleaning off. Now, I believe the war could do that. You know, it's, we definitely know that war can destroy a building easily. So we know that possibly war could destroy that. But I do know this war is going to drastically eliminate the, the, the nations that are coming against Israel. So therefore their enemies will be eliminated or weakened to the point they can't do anything. And so Israel will be able to tear down the mosque without the problems that they would have if they tried to do it today. Now there are people right now who are trying to prefabricate things to get them ready. In Israel, there are people, I don't know, I've just heard this and seen it written, that there are people who are right now in the process of, of making things that will go be a part of the temple when the temple is actually starting to be built. Now, there have been already temples. The first temple was not, we're not talking about the tabernacle, but the first temple was built by who? 
Solomon. <laughs> Solomon, David wanted to build the temple, but, but he, the, he was a man of war, had shed a lot of blood, so God chose not to use him, instead Solomon. It was one of the most magnificent buildings that ever had been constructed on the face of the earth. Gold laden everything, unbelievable place uh, of riches and wealth, every drinking vessel, every, every piece of equipment that was used in there was gold. And so uh, it, was a, it was an amazing event. However, uh, in, in that temple uh, was eventually uh, destroyed. It was built and it was destroyed. And then the children of Israel went into Babylonian exile after that. And during the time they were in Babylonia, there, that one of the kings that rose up was, was a king by the name of Cyrus. Cyrus commissioned that they go back to Israel and rebuild the temple. So he allowed them to go there. They returned and they built a temple. It certainly was not the grandeur of Solomon's temple, but it was a temple for them to worship God. That lasted for about 500 years. And then the third temple we know about. And uh, does anybody know who built the third temple? It was Herod. <laughs> when I was in Israel, they had a, I thought, man, if I'd have dug through all my pictures, I might could have seen, shown you a picture of that tonight. But uh, there is a scale model of Herod's temple in Israel that you can walk around. It's little and you can walk around and see all the parts of it and everything. Uh, that was the most magnificent temple. It was more magnificent actually than Solomon's temple because it was commissioned by the Roman Empire and, and, and Herod wanted to show off to the Romans. Well, it was finished in AD 64, but in AD 70, the Romans came in and totally destroyed it. Remember what Jesus said? He said, not one stone of this thing will be left upon another. It will be destroyed. And guess what? Just a few years later, 64 to 70, that building was destroyed. So you can trust that what God says is always. Now the temple must be rebuilt uh, by at least the middle of the tribulation period. And we know that for several reasons. So we're going to look in the scripture at Matthew 24. We'll be going back and forth to Matthew 24 during our study tonight because this, this chapter has a lot to do with it. Matthew 24, verse number 15 and 16. I think that's the first one I got up there, right? Yes. Matthew 24, 15 and 16. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Now, Jesus here, these are the words of Jesus, is referring to the abomination of desolation. Now, if we go over to Daniel chapter 9, so go with me there, Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to read verse number 27. 9 and 27. This is talking about this abomination of desolation that's going to take place. 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. So he's going to make a covenant for one week, which would be seven years. But in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice. So a sacrifice is going to be reinstituted in the temple after they get it built in Jerusalem, they will reinstitute sacrificial uh, worship. He shall cause sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and the determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Now this is the abomination of desolation, where the Antichrist will enter into the temple and he will start proclaiming himself to be God, which Israel will totally and absolutely reject because they will not accept any man walking on this planet to be God. And they refuse that. So this is that event we're talking about right here. Let's go over to chapter 12 here in Daniel, uh, verse number 11, chapter 12, verse number 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, the abomination that maketh desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. 
So here is the prophecy. Jesus was referring to Daniel. Did you see that in Matthew? He said, just like it was said by Daniel the prophet. Now we're talking about hundreds of years ago, Daniel said this. And now in Matthew 24, hundreds of years later, Jesus is going back to the book of Daniel, recalling what Daniel said to these people that are talking to him. Now all of these people who are talking to him are Jews and they are technically men. Generally women didn't go around doing these kind of things back then. It was men who would be questioning Jesus and these were uh, different kinds of teachers, rabbis, Pharisees, Sadducees, all of these guys. Now, you know, Israelis to this day, from the time a young boy is born, they start working with him. It isn't any time at all until, it, well, when he's 14 years old, when he goes to bar mitzvah, he has to have memorized all of the book of Psalms, all of the books from from Genesis to uh, what's Deuteronomy, he has memorized all of that by the time he's 14 years old. And he goes into this uh, meeting with the, other, with the rabbis who question him to approve his manhood because that, at the bar mitzvah is when a young man becomes a man at 14. Boy, we've messed up in America, haven't we? Yeah. We let them act like fools until they're 18. Then all of a sudden they're men. Oh, they are? Duh, okay, they just get out on their own. They hadn't been trained to do nothing. <laughs> they hadn't been made responsible for anything a lot of times. Come on. But these young men know this much scripture by heart. And so they sit with these rabbis and they are asked all these questions. They have to pass the test to prove they're a man. And that's the test they have to pass. And so all of these guys Jesus is talking to, guess what? He's not talking to stupid people that don't know anything. He's talking to guys that totally know what Daniel said, that totally know what the prophets have said. These are people who he can speak to and they know what he's talking about. So uh, here is that abomination of desolation. Now the Antichrist is going to, as he begins to take power in the middle of the week, remember I said the, you know, the first half, the half of the tribulation period is going to be horrible, but the second half of the tribulation period is going to be Horrible, 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 horrible. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to uh, just multiply and uh, the evilness of things is just going to get doubled and doubled and tripled and tripled during that last three and a half years of the tribulation period. And so it's because this Antichrist, you know, you know anybody who gets a little power, so often people who get power become corrupt. You know, we've proven it by who we send to Washington. These people go to Washington, they're not supposed to become billionaires. They're not supposed to. Something is wrong when you spend 50 years in Congress or the Senate, and then you're a billionaire, and their salaries are not that huge. I mean, they, they have a decent salary. But I'm saying, there's something wrong. There's corruptness when somebody comes out of Congress or the Senate or even the presidency and they are billionaires and multi-billionaires. Somebody's given them money beside the government and they are corrupted. They are corrupted for power. And so they don't want to give up their money. And so in order to stay there, they have to compromise with the evil people that want them to do all kind of evil stuff. It wasn't set up that way. Our Constitution wasn't set up that way. You're supposed to go up there and do what you're supposed to do and then, you know, leave poor. That's what you're supposed to do. Are pretty well poor, at least the normal American, not some kind of rich dude. Some of them are rich before the guy got there. I realized that. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is this Antichrist, in that first three and a half years, everybody's going to be praising him. Everybody's going to be magnifying him. I've always said, don't believe everything that people say about you, how wonderful you are. And don't believe everything about how terrible you are. In other words, don't believe what people say about you. Come on. You know, I was over there in uh, that, that church in Hodge the other day, and this uh, woman is about 80-something. She said, I just, she was telling me something. I said, I was talking to somebody else, and finally she said, 
Are you listening to me? <laughs> I said, oh, no, ma'am, what is it you want to say? She said, you look as young as your daughters. I said, oh, I'm so glad I listened to you. <laughs> now, do I, do I, I'm going to believe that? <laughs> no, but it's nice to hear. <laughs> so I just want you to know that everything people say to you is not true. Whether they're saying good things about you or bad things about you, it's not true. That's why the Bible says a man should think slow, soberly and not have too high opinion of himself. That's, that's important. And I know we're talking about end times, but I'm using this man who is going to become the personification of the devil himself because he's going to become exalted upon the praise of the people. And they're going to push him into this kind of thing, and he's going to walk there. I don't know when he's going to become possessed of the devil, but he will, in the process, be the personification of the devil on this earth, just like Jesus Christ is the personification of God on this earth. He will become the personification of the devil. And so he's going to cause the whole world to worship him. How much more evil can you get than that? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. Verse number 4. We're talking about, let's just go ahead and read uh, 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away. We read this last week. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. This is the son of perdition. This is the Antichrist who opposeth and exalteth himself. So he's going he's gonna to oppose everything that is called God or that people have called God. He's going to oppose the true God he, that, that, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God He's going to act like he's God, not just a God. He's going to profess to be God, the God of the universe. And, and when I read this verse, I thought about that. Because in my trans translation, which is just the King James, they made God a capital letter. And when God is spelled with a capital letter, it's only referring to the only true God. So this is saying that the Antichrist is going to profess to be God, Jehovah God, our God. He's going to profess to be God. He sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is what the Antichrist is going to do in the middle of the week. This is why Israel will break covenant with him in the middle of the week and end up with a lot of suffering, a lot of trouble, a time called Jacob's trouble. The Bible calls it that. A time when true Jews who do not believe that this is the true God that they are worshiping are going to be persecuted severely and go through things they have never gone through before. Look at Revelation 13 and 8. Revelation 13 and 8. This is talking about the Antichrist again. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What does it say? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him unless they have accepted Christ and their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So every single human being that will be on the earth at this time will be deceived by this man that is going to profess to be God. We know that the false prophet works in this as well. We talked about it a little bit last week that he will promote this religion. He's going to kind of be the uh, high priest of this religion, if you want to call it that, the religion of the Antichrist. Uh, so just to know that 
as we look around, we need to understand that this spirit of Antichrist is present today. There is opposition against the true God like we've never seen before on this planet. There is opposition against the kingdom of God. You know why? You know why authority does not like for us to worship God? Because you cannot control people that are truly God worshipers. When you believe the Bible and you firmly and completely serve Jesus Christ and you put him first and you have no other gods before you, like the scripture says, you are uncontrollable. So they don't like that. So they want to do away with religion, especially Christian religion. They want to do away with it. Now, we need to be aware that there are signs of the times. There are signs right now of the times, and there will continue to be signs of the time. Now, you can see a lot of this in Matthew 24, and we're going to read one, one scripture in Matthew 24 to start with, and then Pastor has something to say. Let's go back over here to Matthew 24 and read verse number 3, Matthew 24 and 3. This is, this is the uh, signs of the times. And he sat up on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of the world. And then verse number 7 says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. Are we seeing an increase of wars and these things? You know, I asked the young people in my Sunday school class Sunday, I said, uh, could you could you all know that ever since you've been alive, there's been a war going on in the world and America has been involved in them? Of course, they don't know, most of them, but it's true. Ever since these teenagers have been alive, there has been war and America has been involved in them. I want to back up just, uh-oh, this is not on. Uh-uh. Okay. I want to back up just a tad. I felt a little bit of, oh, yeah, you can control Christians. They can be controlled. Let me tell you about it real quick. The Hebrew children went in the fire furnace. Guess what happened? They were going to get rid of them. They come out. The Lord come down that fire. Daniel got thrown in the lion's den. Guess what happened? The lions were supposed to eat him. They were trying to control him. They were trying to get rid of him. And the Lord shut the lion's mouth and got out. Dan, uh, Paul, y'all know the shipwreck and all. Y'all know the viper that bit him that was supposed to be one of them one steppers and kill him. He shook him off her. You know why? Because somebody that really loves God, if God comes down and intervenes, you can't control him. <laughs> That's right. Amen. You definitely cannot. Those who, those who are anointed of the Holy Spirit are uncontrollable. Praise the Lord. Uh, so, all of these things we know are coming to pass. And, you know, these, these guys... Uh, where Jesus uh, told them, let me see where, where I am, uh, Luke, yeah, let's go to Luke, I think I'm, I'm going to look at my list up there and be sure that I'm on track, Matthew 24, 3 and 4, uh, and then Luke 21, let's go to Luke 21, uh, verse number 11, Luke 21, verse 11. It says, therefore, therefore, let me settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth of wisdom. So here in this, this, Matthew, this Luke 24 is the same uh, prophecy as Matthew 24, Luke 21 is the same as Matthew 24, so much of the comparison of the scripture here, and called before, persecution called before people, don't worry about it, I'm going to give you something, whatever it is that you need to say. Now let's go back to Matthew 24, I told you this Matthew 24 is going to be prevalent tonight, and, and you could read it this week and refresh yourself on some of this, uh, Matthew 24 verse 8, and it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. He's talking about wars and rumors of wars. He's talking about nations rising against nations. That's what he's just got through talking about. He's talking about earthquakes and pestilence, all of these things. He just is talking to them about these things that are happening on the earth. He said, all these are 
the beginning of sorrows. So these are the foreshadowing of the things that are going to begin to happen upon this planet during the tribulation period. Uh, as I've, I've told you before, when the church is gone, the Bible says God's wrath will be poured out upon this earth without mixture. I don't know if you believe it or not. I hope you do because the Bible tells us that God is a God of love and mercy, but he's also a God of wrath. He always has been and he always will be. So right now we have a God who, who mixes the bowl with mercy when he pours out judgment. If he pours out judgment, it's always mixed with mercy. But during the tribulation period, these things will be poured out upon the earth, the Bible says, without mixture, which means it's going to be pure wrath, without mercy. You don't want to be here. Now, one of the big signs of the end time that the Lord told us about was, uh, was moral decay. Moral decay. Let me explain something to you. I, 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 let me, the Lord put this on my heart when I, was, uh, when I was praying this morning. We are easy as a society to be dumbed down. We, if they tell us something often enough and long enough, we begin to accept it as normal. That is very dangerous. You just look back over the years of the media. You know, I remember when television came into existence. I know some of you don't. It's been alive all your life. I remember that it was totally spanking clean. There were no curse words. No male and female ever were in the same bed together. Never. It was clean, clean, squeaky clean. Watch Andy Griffith. <laughs> what? And the news just told you the truth, the facts, and then you decided what you believed about it. So, <laughs> that's what the media started out to be. And they didn't go from that in 19, whatever that was. I don't know what year was the television in, Benny. Uh, I don't know. 55, thank you, 54, 55. Uh, they didn't go in 54 and 55 from that, pure, pure, just, like I said, Andy Griffith, you know? I mean, when Opie told a lie, he got in trouble, Ugh. right? Mm -hmm. They didn't go from that three years later to what we have today. They have made you comfortable. They have made you comfortable with man and woman in the bed together, whether they're married or not. Yeah, and then they made you comfortable with every kind of cuss word under the sun. There are no holes barred now. You can just cuss like a blue streak and nobody cares. Some of the channels that are kind of geared toward old people, <laughs> bleep them, but not the normal ones. The, our television's gone from that. And now I was sitting in a restaurant the other day eating and I looked on the TV screen and two men are in a lip lock like you wouldn't believe. I don't mean just a little, I mean they were in a heavy kiss, two men, right there on the screen in front of me in a, trying to eat a meal. Oh, that'll never be comfortable with me. Oh, yes, it can. And it certainly can become comfortable to your children and your grandchildren. They begin to think that's the way life is, and it's okay, that's just the way they are. They were born that way. All those things that the media tells them, 
when they watch TV. And God forbid if you sit through a movie when they're cursing a blue streak, when they're having sex in the bed together, when they are man and man, woman and woman, and you sit through a movie and don't yank your kids up and get your behind out of that place. I don't care if you paid $100 to go. God forbid that Christians sit in there and listen to that kind of trash and allow their children to be exposed to it and act like it's okay. It is not okay. It is not okay. It's an abomination to God. Right now there are some people trying to make Christian movies. Go to them. Go to them. They're really trying to make Christian movies right now. Find them and go to them to let America know this is what we want. We want purity and cleanness. So they dumb us down, they, they expose us to everything under the sun, and the next thing you know, we're pretty comfortable with whatever in the world they promote. And it doesn't bother most Americans that the news media is on the side of the government. That's not what the news media is supposed to be. The news media is supposed to oppose the government, expo expose the government. That's what they're supposed to do. Now, right now they're kind of doing a little bit, but you know I wonder about the agenda. But they're supposed to tell the truth about what's going on in the White House, in Congress. They're supposed to, the media is supposed to tell American people the truth. They don't. They don't. They twist the news to make you believe what the agenda is. Trust me, if you're just listening to any old news and you're believing them because the news said it is true, then you're up for trouble. It's, it's, uh, the news media, by and large, is propaganda. propaganda. There's few sources out there that are trying to tell the truth, but they are... They're not the ones that have the big names. And there are a few people out there trying to tell the truth. So you, you have to be selective and you have to be careful. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, I don't give a hoot. It's wrong. It's wrong. I don't care how they promote it. It's okay. Now, so these moral signs, what I'm trying to tell you, this is a sign of the end of time. You know, uh, this is what happened to the Roman Empire. They said, you know, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. I don't know if you see sometimes, sometimes I see people in authority, they're being asked questions about really horrendous sins and crimes and they're laughing about it, grinning and making smirky faces because they know they're not going to get in trouble. God forbid. Come on. I know this is popular. Y'all are just going to love me for this, but it's true. So, I'm going to show you what the end time looks like. Let's go over to this scripture. All of you know it in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 3. All of you know this passage of scripture, but boy, every time I read through it, I realize it's getting to be more and more prevalent. 2 Timothy 3, my dad knew this was his, he quoted this whole passage, and it was the last scripture that he lost. This is the last one that he lost when he, when he got to where he didn't know things anymore. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Just listen to this list, guys. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Duh. I want to say duh after every word. Covetous. <laughs> boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. I'm watching the news right now. Disobedient to parents. You know, when they first started changing the sitcoms, you know, about in the, what, 60s, early 70s, Daddy was the idiot in the family. Do y'all remember Daddy becoming the idiot in the family? I promise you, it was real. There was a, it was on purpose. Destroy the family and you'll destroy the nation. Unthankful. Boy, you don't get thanks much anymore. Unholy. Without natural affection. That's homosexuality. Without natural affection. Natural affection is a man to a woman. 
unnatural affection is man to man and women to women. It is wrong. It is ungodly. It is an abomination to God. Truce breakers are people that make a covenant with somebody and don't pay their bills. That's what it is. If you make a promise, you make a covenant, you do it. You, you pay your bills before you go out to eat. You pay your bills before you buy new clothes. If you made a truce with somebody, you pay your bills before you get your hair done for $300. Am I preaching now? If you made a covenant to pay somebody a car note, you pay that off before you decide to go redecorate your house and put all new furniture everywhere under the sun. And get some more debt you promised that you can't pay. You live frugally and carefully and pinch every penny. Oh, y'all don't shout me down now. If you have a debt, that is the priority of your life and everything else needs to be secondary to that debt. It's a gratification that I go into debt, but it's a sad thing when I got to pay it off. Amen. I go out there and I get me a new car. Boy, it drives better. Woo, this is wonderful. But then you got to pay the bill. Come on. And some of these companies, I mean, you, you can go get a new car, but if your credit score is 500, you're going to pay three times what the car cost. Isn't that right, Mr. Banker? Okay, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. I won't break every one of these down. Despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. So, the rest of that in Matthew 24, I'm going to have to let you read on your own. I would, I would suggest that you just read through Matthew 24 and Luke 21 this week and remind us that Jesus knew. And by the way, uh, for some reason I didn't, I didn't put those scriptures in my list for, and I don't have them written down either. But these leaders were supposed to know all of this that he was talking to. He, they, they were supposed to be able to, you know, Isaiah and uh, Isaiah had told them all about the Messiah, how that he would raise the dead and how he would heal the blinded eyes and all that. But they still did not believe he was the Christ. And so the signs, if we know the signs, we don't want to be ignorant. They knew the signs, but they were ignorant. We don't want to be ignorant. Once we know the signs, we need to get our eyes open. We don't be ignorant. Watch what's going on in the world. Get your eyes open. Things are going on in the world right now that are foreshadowing what's going to happen during the tribulation period. So don't be ignorant. Ask God to give you wisdom. Don't believe everything you hear. Compare everything you do hear with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you for your attention tonight.